So what do we do? We blow the whistle. What is up, everyone, and welcome back to another F6 Weekly Blog. So this week we're in the middle and we're at South Park. And obviously it's our March Madness Month for fitness, so you're going to learn a new fitness session today. It's speed and agility, as well as we look through my trends data to see how I can improve my refereeing just from looking at my trends, like looking back at the season in terms of yellow cards. And the most yellow cards I've given for it is a C4, which is delaying the restart of play. So we're going to look at how we deal with it, how we can manage it and how we can prevent it really because I've given an awful lot of them. But enough of that. I will see you Friday for what will be a speed and agility session. Enjoy the vlog. Good afternoon and welcome to match day minus one. But I have been running with these two gentlemen over here, as you can see, knackered. Match day minus one equals one thing, it's speed session. So we worked on acceleration today and turning sort of agility, turning at speed. So you'd have seen the session. Again, three sets, 10 reps of each exercise, two minute rest in between sets. And that was today's session. If you want any fitness stuff, check the link in our description where there's a free referee workout plan but you can download, all you've got to do is join our mailing list. But for now, that's it in terms of Friday. Chill out for the rest of the evening and prepare for what will be match day tomorrow at South Park. We'll catch you there. Hello everybody. So I am coming at you from my pre-match walk. Um, I thought I'd do something a little bit different. Um, the reason I do a pre-match walk and what I do on it is I don't wake up completely ready for match day. Um, I'm a little bit sort of grow into the day. So what I tend to do is listen to music. Um, and that's sort of how I like to go things about it. In terms of the day, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get home pre-match. Um, I don't have to leave till 12.30, so it can be a slightly bigger meal. And then I'm gonna meet my assistant at 12.30 and travel to the game. South Park versus Telford. South Park a team we've done before. It should be a good game. No assessor, uh, but it'd be nice to get going because I've got a busy week of three games. Saturday, Tuesday, Saturday. So let's get this going. And let me start ramping up the music to get going. I will see you when I get back for either pre-match or packing my bag, whatever comes first. But we do have something new for the kit bag today, and I think you're going to like it. So stay tuned for that. See you in a bit. It's pre-match, pre-match meal time. Um, so I have got the same as last week, I think. I can't quite remember, but it's crusty bread, halloumi, and mushrooms. I'm a big fan of this at the moment. It's not too heavy. It's got plenty of fats in it to keep me going, carbs, protein, uh, in the halloumi and the mushrooms. It's a really simple meal to make it takes like 10 minutes so it doesn't take too much of my time and i don't have to stress about doing loads um, and like i said i only like to eat one meal not that big um, and then have a nice glass of water with it as well it's got plenty of salts in it as well to stop you getting cramped later on in the game as well which is really important especially um, if you haven't reffed in a couple of weeks cramp is a big thing so we eat this up and pack my kit bag and then it's almost time to go um, as always uh, before i get there my pretty much playlist is here um, which you can listen to a couple of new songs on it as well, put the uh, assistance through it as well. But yeah, I'm very much now prepared and ready to go. Uh, I'm very excited. I'm going to get back in the middle for what will be a big week and a big game. So I'll see you when I pack my kit back. Hello. So welcome to kit bag check time. So the things I've got different today are this fab boy. So I've done it from a different angle. I bought a suitcase. So this one's from Castore. It's a little bit bigger than the Nike suitcase. That's why I went for it, because it means I can fit my flags in it. I've already tested it out. Um, and it's obviously got two compartments, one for kit, as in like my match kit will go in this side, and my like miscellaneous stuff like my sweets, my speakers, my boots will go in this side. So they're sort of separate as well. And it's got a nice mesh thing, so it keeps it all tidy. The stuff we're bringing today are sweets. These are jelly worms. My choice of gels and tablets are strawberry and lime and apple and they're going to go in this pocket of the bag because they're easy access um i've got towel wash bag undershorts wash kit um new nike top because i'm in the middle warm-up stuff which is my new mid layer absolute shams this um and warm-up top two pairs of match shorts three pairs of match socks match socks 
True socks, which I really like. They're very grippy. Check out the review. Uh, it's going to be here. Nike socks, which are the old ones, and Nike socks, which are the new ones, which I really only wear for lines, but I'm going to bring them anyway. Under Armour's, two. Long sleeve, short sleeve, crime sheets. And last month, with some chewing gum, pen, and my expenses cards, all the things I need to tick off because I'm the main one driving. Refs Tech buzzer flags, which will go in here. Uh, with spare batteries, remember the spare batteries. And my boots, which are the Adidas copper boots. So, after I've absolutely thrown it everywhere, I'm going to quickly pack this up and then head to the ground. I'm ready to go. Well, I'm not ready to go, but I'm very excited and looking forward to getting this show on the road. So, let's pack this stuff up and get going. <music> Different location. Usually I do this in my car, but we wanted to shoot off. Um, we were in the ground quite a long time, sort of with post-match and stuff, which is fine. Um, and then it was a long drive back. Um, so we just wanted to get it done, get home. So I'm just back from the game and I'm really happy with how it went. Um, it was a seven goal thriller, four, three to South Park. I really enjoyed it. I haven't looked at my stats yet, but I know that I, the only thing I've looked at, I haven't looked at my heat map. I haven't looked at how far I've run. I've just gone straight down to the heart rate data and I know what I've got to do for recovery tomorrow which is about 7k um, so the stats are here um, so that's obviously what I use Ref6 for now and then what I'm going to do is look at my stats for the first time when I debrief this in a couple of days time um, but I'm really happy with how it went I managed the game really well it was a thriller like I said don't look at the league table because the team that should have been walked over ended up going one nil up and it caused a little bit of you know not aggro, but, you know, intensity to the game. And I've had so many of these, like, the underdog goes one nil up now that I'm sort of used to that and good at that, uh, dealing with that, which is great. Um, no real major issues as well, which is really nice. Everyone seemed happy when we came off. One dog, though, which we'll discuss, um, which is denying an obvious goal-scoring opportunity, um, which I gave a yellow for. Five cautions in the game, three for delaying the restart, which is very high, something that we're going to have to look into. Uh, two for, and two for foul tackles as well. One in the sixth minute. Um, but yeah, very entertaining, very end-to-end -end game. I think I've covered a lot of distance. My legs feel pretty tired, but it will be recovery tomorrow. Um, but I will catch you guys in a few days because I'm, again, buzzing off this. I'm in a good vein of form. And hopefully I can bring this into Tuesday's game as well, which will be Burgess Hill. Um, we talk about a lot about referees being in form and stuff, and I'm hoping that I can carry that on when I get assessed as well. Um, but yeah, really happy with how it went. And uh, I look forward to catching up with you in the next, in the next couple of days. So, back at Ref6 HQ after the South Park game. Uh, and as you can see, it was 4-3 to South Park. What it's important for me to do, it's February now, and looking back at the season is just as important as looking forward. So, if we head over to my trends page first, uh, and then press filters, and then take out, just as a referee, so that's all I want to do is look at my referee stats, and then change the date from career to season. This allows me to look at all the yellow cards I've given throughout the year, um, and sort of look deep, deeper into them because obviously what we do is you can break it down again by code as well. So foul tackles, C1, C4, C2 for descent, which I haven't given that many that this year for. So if we look at my yellow card codes, I've given 91 yellow cards this year, which is quite high, averaging three and a half a game. But the important stuff for me is looking at where these yellow cards have come from. And for me, I've given 55 for a foul tackle and 16 for delaying the restart and that feels very high. So we're gonna dive deeper into what is delaying the restart, what to look for, how to manage it, because these feel like a lot of these yellow cards could be managed. Uh, delaying the restart is a lot of managing the players and the expectation and what does the game expect. But onto the game itself, um, looking at the distance, 9.23K, very standard for me at the moment. I'm running between 9 and 10, so, you know, almost bang in the middle. And from my heat map, we can see I'm quite central, not really exploring this left-hand side down here. 
to making sure the ball is between me and my assistant. But that is something that we've been working on all season and it doesn't look like it's going to be changed quickly. Um, it's a long process to change. It's a long process. Sprint map. This is really nice to look at for me. As always, I find a lot of the, the information important here because I can look at how fast I've run in, how far I've run in. And like I've always said, the low ones I tend to find are me getting into position when the ball's out of play and the orange ones are me getting into position when the ball's in play. So quick breaks and uh, counter-attacks. So yeah, those are the things we look for. And these long sweeping runs here show that what has potentially happened is I've followed the ball on a quick break, given a goal kick, and then sort of carried on that speed all the way around because it's easier to recover when you're in position rather than rest when the ball has gone out of play and then slowly amble to where you need to be. It's better to be in that position early, set up and ready to go. And that's what you can see in a couple of times here. Delaying the restart. Uh, it's a card that for me has been given a lot this year and for a lot of people on Sunday leagues, it's really difficult to manage. So what I've got is a couple of clips here from a few of my other games that I've come in and what we can do is just talk through you know, what to look for, how to set the players up. So for this is the keeper. So the ball goes out of play here. And what, what we want to do is watch the keeper. So he's playing with his shin pads. So does he need to be playing with his shin pads? Is he making an active effort to go for the ball? What is the score at this point? So in this game, it's 1-0 to the yellow team. Again, he's messing around. Can we stand? So if we pause it here. Can we be, as a referee, in and around these areas here to make sure that you know, we're hurrying the keeper up so everybody in the ground and the other team know that we're actively dealing with getting the ball back in play? Another thing to look for in the, what the goalkeepers are doing is moving the, the way the ball goes. So as you can see, the keeper set the ball up here and then he's going to want to move it. Does he need to do this? No. So we've taken 40 seconds out of the game now and I haven't done anything with the play. They're looking to waste time and they've wasted a lot of time here. So we've got to make sure that if he's moving it around, we have to be active. So we should be shouting, come on keeper, let's get going. Because he's already put the ball down once to set it. He doesn't need to move it again, regardless of what's going on. So that's what we have to be aware of as well. It's all about setting the keeper up. This is not a great clip for me personally. So just be more active in and around those areas. And the second clip is very similar. Look, what's he going to do? He rolls the ball out, ready to set. Oh, no, he's going to change where he puts it. So we have to be on top of this from minute one because otherwise players get frustrated, managers get frustrated, fans get frustrated, and then we can end up giving rubbish yellow cards. So what we have to do is, what we would recommend is having a public word with the keeper, having a public word with the captain, so therefore everybody knows that you've dealt with him, and then make sure that you shout, come on keeper, let's get the ball in play. And then by that time, you'd have had three or four opportunities to hurry him up, and if it doesn't happen, then it's an easy yellow card, and everybody in the ground goes, okay, I understand why he's given that. And there's no real confusion about why you've not spoken to him. That's the easiest way to do it, in my opinion. But one of the things that we need to look for is when the ball is in the keeper's hand, because there's been a lot of mistakes that are quite high profile recently. So when the ball's in the keeper's hand and he's roughly taken too long, a lot of people blow the whistle and what's the next decision? Write in the comments before I say. So in this scenario, the keeper's running around, doesn't know what to do, delays it again, delays it again. What's the score at this point? One all. So what do we do? We blow the whistle. He's not delaying the restart because the ball is in play. So you can't give him a yellow card for this. So be very careful that if you're going to blow the whistle here, it's an indirect free kick from where the keeper has the ball in his hand. And then um, that's it. Don't caution him because he's not actually delayed the restart play because the ball is in play. So if there's one thing I take from this is if you're going to caution a goalkeeper, Make sure you caution him at a goal kick, a throw in, a corner, whatever. Make sure the goal, the ball is dead. Uh, and then it's a lot easier to process and it's a lot easier to handle because it's about what the game expects. And that is uh, the biggest learning from my clips that I've looked through in terms of delaying the restart. I'm clearly not managing enough 
and then I'm waiting for everyone to get a bit frustrated and overcooked and then I'm dishing out yellow cards and that's not a good process. So yeah, going into your games, look back at your clips and make sure you've got a good enough process going forward. But that has been my clips and my stats for this week. Uh, thank you very much for watching. Please like and subscribe and I'll see you at the next Ref6 video.